back home in Maryland, uh, about to get tatted uh, at Heavy Hitters uh, with my guy P-Loc. So uh, come check it out. All right, so let's, let's start on that on that sleeve. When did when did you start materializing like all the ideas? Like for you, how do you go about it? I know a lot of guys do different things like Instagram, Pinterest, you know, just notes writing down as, as you come up with different shit. How did you start materializing? How long did it take you to come up with the full idea? Uh, I've always had ideas like since, you know, I, I wanted to go into this side. Like I wanted to do something more like in my childhood and me growing up and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, from like the team I played with when I was a little kid, Boys and Girls Club, to like my favorite cartoon shows, to um, the portrait of me and my, my mom when I first got drafted, mm -hmm. uh, my first dog, my, you know, first car, like stuff like that. So there's like a lot of like first. You know, so once I like had like that that idea, that thing, then I like it was just full, you know what I mean? And did you have like specific images like that you came to him with? Or was it more like this is what this is, you know, I mean blues clues, SpongeBob, or did you want Sponge because SpongeBob with the basketball is fire. Right, right, right. It's different. Right. Nobody has that. Right. Did you have that image or did you guys come together and figure it out? I had that image but I had that image of SpongeBob since I was like nine years old actually. Yeah. And I used to have, I, I used to be one of my profile pictures. Was it? Yeah. Um, but the Blue's Clues, like, was kind of like freestyle. Like, we were just trying to figure out a picture. Uh, the portrait, obviously, is, you know, self explanatory, but, like, the Batman and, like, the Batmobile and, like, my uh, Boys and Girls Club logo, like, that stuff was, like, kind of, you know, improvised. So mm -hmm. it was good. And then, so a lot of people, like, whenever someone gets a tattoo of themselves, there's usually always people that are like, yo, that's crazy, why would you do that, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. What was like your thought process, or did you ever, were you ever like, hmm, I don't know, or like, what was, what was the thought process on it? No, it was a moment, like, it was a moment that I'll never be able to, like, you can't recreate that moment. It was the moment I got drafted, mm -hmm. and like, it was a picture of my mom, you know what I mean? Like, it was just me and my mom, it wasn't, it wasn't because, like, I was in it, it was yeah. because I was with her, you know? Um, and it was just a picture that I had, I first got drafted and I just, you know, one of the, that was like one of the biggest moments of my life, you know what I mean? So it had nothing to do with me. And, uh, and what was what was her reaction to that? I'm sure she was like she emotional was, with that. Yeah, she was, she, she was just impressed about how accurate it looked. Yeah. She was like, oh, she said, how did he do that? Like, it looked crazy. So stuff like that. But, you know, she, she obviously liked how it looked. So it was good. That's fine. And then talk to me, you have the, the Joker on the leg. Yeah. So the Joker, I saw an interview where you were saying that you enjoy being like the villain when it comes to things. Or like yeah. when you're playing basketball, you enjoy being the villain. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, the Joker is my, my favorite character in, in all of like cinema, like all of movies and stuff like that. He, uh, just is the way he is, man. He's like, my opinion, the best villain ever with no superpowers, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, he, yeah, he's just him. And, um, you know, and if you like really like research him and like his story and all that, it's actually like, you can actually see how someone could like become like that, you know what I mean? It's not like he was like, like some crazy power or nothing. Like yeah. it was just, you know, him being bullied and stuff like that and all that. So um, everything just about him, I love. And I, 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 I play basketball, I like being a villain too. So I mean, it's cool, like, you know, at the, at the end of the day, like, you know, so I think, um, you know, it was, um, yeah, we, I related to him a little bit. What was for you the most painful spot to ever get tattooed? Um, inside my arm. Mm -hmm. uh, the Blue's Clues one or this arm? Uh, probably the inside of this arm. It was up there. I mean, kind of where he's at now, like by the nipple. <laughs> yeah. It's like bad spot, you know what I mean? Um, and like, so we'll get we'll get the thumbnail right here. Front, front of the leg, <laughs> front of the leg is like front of the leg was tough, like on the shin. Yeah, it was tough. Right. And then what about like for you? Like I don't I don't know how to how to like put into words. But when you're 
going and getting like certain tattoos, like Blue's Clues and SpongeBob, right? Yeah. Cartoons, like you would think them uh, as them as like funny, like when you're growing up, things like that. A lot of people would be like, oh, that's crazy to get that tatted, or like would never get some tatted like that. For you, it's just like something you loved growing up, and and it meant so much to you, or like just remembrance was was there, and that's why you wanted it. Yeah. So, you know, everybody has their like from the outside looking in, you have your opinion, right? So for me, you know, when it was just me, and my mom, when I was growing up, we first moved into this house and. We didn't have cable at the time, so she got me like a SpongeBob like DVD and a Blue Clues DVD. I okay. won that, and I wear that. I would watch it on repeat every day, yeah. like just those two. And then they ended up coming like my favorite cartoons. SpongeBob was obviously still my favorite now, and so it just meant a lot, you know. At that time, you know what I mean, like because that's all I was watching. I didn't have no other channels for real, you know, and. Uh, but people don't know that. Like they just think like I'm getting like a random exactly, cartoon. Yeah, yeah, you know but it's, I mean? got a, so, it's got the meaning for you. But the meaning is like, you know what I mean? Like it's deeper than what people would think. Well that's why we're here doing this. You know, but then SpongeBob is just like my, my favorite cartoon ever though. Like it's you know, I, I love watching the show. Yeah. So now, people, love that. people love yeah. that. I, I don't I don't think there's another actually Bol Bol has Squidward on his leg. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you and Bol Bol got the two SpongeBob tats in the NBA. Yeah. It's crazy though seeing like different like general, like we're I'm 24 as well, so we're both 24. Where like the cartoons that some people get, like the older guys, versus like what you're starting to see, like shit we grew up on. It's so crazy. True. Me. Yeah, because yeah, when he told me that, I was thinking like, damn, a lot of people get like way older cartoons, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so when he said like Blue's Clues, SpongeBob, I was like, damn, that's that's a different era right there. Yeah. And SpongeBob came in in '99. And I was born '99, yeah. so it was like the same year. Yeah. No, me too. '99. When's your birthday? April. I'm May. Oh, okay. So, but I'm not, like, I'm 92, so that's yeah. like way different. <laughs> yeah. What would you, what'd you grow up watching? Uh, shit, Power Rangers. Yeah. What else? I don't even remember, bro. <laughs> it's been so damn long. All right, so I'm shifting to you now. Spotlight's on. So you're a tattoo artist, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. This is for a girl. I already know where this is going, bro. You don't have a lot. You don't have a lot of tattoos. Yeah. So talk to me about it. Why? So for me, honestly, bro, it was my mom. We uh we made a pact back in the day when I first got my first kit. Okay. And um the deal was that if she bought me the kit, I wouldn't get any tattoos. So sure. I was like, fuck it, that's easy to do. And then um, I think after a while, I just I just stuck on to that for like so long that I never really thought of what I wanted. And now that I'm older, shit, even now it's hard for me to commit to something that I really want like forever. But um, I think now that I'm older, I don't really look for like what I want as much as I used to when I was young. And I think it's a good thing because if I would have got tatted when I was young, I probably would have put some dumb shit on myself anyway. <laughs> yeah. But um, really, it was my mom, bro. It was she's like one of those like. You know, stereotypical, strict Latino religious parents. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it was just always like respect for her. That's why I didn't do it. And then over the years, as I got older, I just never really planned to like get a tattoo. And um, I think it's not till now that I'm older that I really want to get some work done. But I just need to commit. That's all it is now. But I was going to say, like for me, doing what I do is like, I see tattoos probably half as much as you, if not like a, a quarter of it. Mm -hmm. And for me, it would drive me crazy, like always seeing cool stuff like every other day. I'd be like, damn, okay. Like I need to get something cool eventually. All right, cool, I need to, I need to get something. Like you're sitting there every single day tattooing people. You don't get like that itch to be like, fuck, I like I want something. So what's funny is back in the day, I used to save images for myself that I wanted to get tatted. And then over time, I noticed that I was kind of saving all the work that I wanted to get done and I wasn't putting it on people. Mm -hmm. So then I started switching up. I started tattooing what I would get on people. And I think now that I'm older, even if I were to get something, it'd probably be something that somebody already has. So I think at first it was, it was a lot of like, damn, I want this, I want that. And then I started putting it on everybody. And then now I feel like if I were to get something, somebody already has it somewhere else. So I feel like, um, I don't know. I think I do see it a lot, but for that reason, I just never, I mean, I don't even know what I would get, bro. I got, you, I got like an idea of something, but I don't know. What do you say to people that are like, you know, you, you could not, nah, you can't be a tattoo artist without tattoos? I used to hear that shit all the time back in the day. I feel like it, it doesn't, that's like saying you can't be a barber if you don't have a cut. There's a lot of barbers with long ass hair, but, <laughs> I feel like um, 
it, it's just two different things, bro. It, it's one thing though, because I don't I don't know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. So that's true. Like that's how I was just gonna ask. They, they got a point on that part because I, I don't know what it feels like to sit for you know eight plus hours, and I usually do a lot of full days. So on that part, it's true. Um, as far as me not being a good tattoo artist because I don't have any, I don't think that part is true. Because I feel like, if anything, I, I feel like I know, well, I don't really know, but I, I feel like I have an idea of what it would feel like on certain areas mm. just by tattooing people. Like, I know this area right here sucks, <laughs> but I, I don't know what it feels like physically, you know? Yeah. So. You can you <laughs> Did it, yeah, right? <laughs> Did it spook you at all when you were when you linked up with him like for the first time? I don't know. I just care about the quality of the work. Yeah. I, I, I could care less. So in the beginning, did you find it harder then without having like your portfolio built up? Yeah, not nah, for sure, bro. I, I think at the beginning, I actually had some people that would like walk out of because I used to tattoo in my house for like six years. Mm -hmm. So I had some people that would leave because they they wouldn't trust me. And back in the day, you know, you you ain't have Instagram wasn't a thing. You yeah. ain't really have a lot to like show your work. So it was like, look on Google, tell me what you want, and I'll tattoo you. Yeah. But um, I feel like, yeah, at first it was a lot of like people not trusting me because I didn't have any. So it took some time before I really started building up that clientele. Yeah. But I also feel like that's kind of what kept me going. It like made me hungry to like prove myself, you know. Yeah. But how? So talk to me about your background and like how you got started. Um, like was your first interest in kind of art, like in, in like drawing and stuff in school, or were you like straight into tattoos? Like were you like, hmm, I really want to start doing tattoos, or were you just an art guy from the beginning? Nah, so back in the day I used to do art, um, mainly graffiti. I used to do a lot of graffiti when I was in high school. And then it's funny because my brother was the first one that started tattooing. He uh, he started with a friend, and one day we had like a, like a best friend growing up that wanted some work done, and Shit, he, my brother didn't want to do it, so he made me do it. And then uh, that was like the first one I ever did. After I did that, all his friends started hitting me up. And from there, I just started tattooing like everyone that I was in like high school with. So it was only like, I think I was on my last year of high school. Mm -hmm. It was like four months of tattooing in high school. And then um, I started tattooing in college. Then I started putting my work on Instagram. I started getting a lot of like, I, I used to give out a lot of like uh, little business cards with my phone number on it and stuff like that. So it was a lot of word of mouth back in the day. Yeah. But it's, um, al it's always been in the same area? Like you've always been over here? Yeah. So I grew up in Riverdale and that's where most of my clients were at. But um, it, it's not too far from here. It's like, it's still a DMV. So really most of my clientele is in the DMV. Do you have any people that have been going to you since like day one? Like you have a client yeah. that, yeah? Yeah. You know what's funny that some of them have like some of my older work and they don't want to cover it. Well, because now it's like it's like dope to see where, I've, like, yeah, where I'm at now. You've yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jeezy said um, he tattooed his first tattoo was on his dad. It was a portrait and he said it's disgusting. And he said his dad refuses to let him cover it up. Yeah, I, he, I wouldn't. Yeah. yeah, but he said he runs around and he's like, yeah, my son did this, but it's a terrible <laughs> tattoo. And everyone's like, nah, fuck that then. Like, I'm yeah, not going like, to I, I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I wish I could have tattooed my parents, bro. Do they have any tattoos? Nah, hell no. They don't want any. Even nowadays, I'm like, you know, you got the, you got the cheat code right here. I can yeah. tattoo you for free. They don't want anything, bro. No. Well, they're, they're stern on it. I'm the same, my parents are the same. My parents don't have tattoos. They don't like tattoos at all. Yeah. But now it's kind of like. So what do they think about you being in, well, in, the, in the industry? That's what I'm saying. Now it's kind of like, you know, came home with half my leg and it was like, oh, all right. My boy's tatted now. Yeah. No, they don't, I mean, they, they like know what I do and like what I want to do. So obviously like they're supportive on that side, but like my mom is like no more tattoos like she's so against it uh where like my dad's kind of getting to the point where he's like all right that's pretty cool so it's been a good like switch up yeah yeah sadiq what um this is a question i ask everybody so we have like a collective through every every episode we've done but so how much have you spent on your tattoos Ooh, that's a good question oh <laughs> uh, i probably spent the most on, on him but uh, i'm joking but uh <laughs> My first tattoo ever was like two, 
200? Probably like 200, and the second one was like 170. But then, so that's like, what is that? 400, like 400, about, about 400 dollars, like 230 and 170, about 400. So, but now, bro, I probably spent, <laughs> definitely over like, definitely over, definitely over like 15,000 for sure. Yeah. 15K, yeah. definitely over. Yeah, some some around there. And what do you think? Like we were talking a little bit before. Like how your mom's always like knew you were gonna get tatted, or whatever. If you if you went and told her that number right now, what do you think her face would be? Uh, well, first I have to explain it here. It wasn't all at one time. <laughs> uh, I think she would be like, obviously the number sounds crazy, but the quality of it though, yeah. it's like the investment of, you know, I could go get like uh, a bunch of. $50 tattoos and it, it don't look good. Yeah. Or look like how I want it, you know? All right. So it's an investment, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, it's gonna be on you forever. So like the the money is something that's gonna last, you know? I was gonna, I wanna ask, I've never asked this before actually, I just thought of this. So a lot of, I know a lot of NBA dudes, you have like your financial advisors and whatnot, like with, when you sign your deals, like contracts, whatever. When you go to them and like talk about getting like a big piece and it's like, oh, this is gonna cost me, you know, four or five grand. Do they kind of understand like that it's an investment, or are they looking at you like, "Yo, come on"? Well, I don't tell my financial guy that I spend that on that. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just, I have like a, you know, you have a budget yeah. that you have just spending money discretionary mm -hmm. per month, and you just, I just use. So tattoo is not not in the investment category yet. Yeah, I mean, I guess so you could put an investment, but I don't, I don't tell, I don't tell them like, "Yo, I'm about to spend this yeah, on this yeah. tattoo." They just. See me with more tattoos, and it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> nah, I never even thought of that, because I know you guys have, like, like yeah. just, like, guide you on shit. Do they ever tell you no on, like, certain things? Oh, they can never tell you no, but they'll just advise you, be like, yo, it's not smart, or whatever. Yeah. Don't buy like, the $100,000 chain. <laughs> they're just, like, no jets, no boats, you know? Yeah. Boat. Boat's a good investment, though. You think so? Hell yeah. I'd be on a boat every weekend. They say the best boat is your friend's boat. Ah, that's true. The <laughs> best boat is your friend's boat. You be on your friend's boat every weekend. Mm-hmm. What was, did you have like a welcome to the, welcome to the league moment? Where like someone cooked you? Or you got dunked on something? I don't know, I got dunked on bad. Never got like, I think, I would say, I don't know, man. I don't ever had like my woke up to the NBA. I feel like it was like my first preseason game, bro. Just being like in the locker room and like just the everything, like just being in the in the league, bro. Like it's the first time ever being like it was just different from yeah. college, you know. Like it's it's just different, bro. Was there any player while you're playing, you're like kind of looking at them like, damn, like I'm I'm sharing the court with you know Melo or or Bron, whatever. I lost that when I like when Kobe passed. Yeah, you know what I mean. Cause that was like your dude you wanted to. Yeah, that's like the guy you used to watch, you know. Yeah. Like, obviously, there's a lot of guys that I respect, look up to, especially like KD from this area. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot, a lot of guys that you see. Like, I didn't watch nobody as much as Cole, you know. So, I think I would be more like that if I would have played Cole though. Yeah. And then be like, oh shit, that's Cole, you know. Yeah, yeah. that would have been surreal. Yeah. Cause that's literally like your kid sitting at home watching TV, and then right. now it's like, damn, that dude's right, right. next to me. Like, right. yeah. Who's uh, who's been the hardest player for you to guard? Toughest player to guard. Hmm. I'll say, man, Katie's seven foot, man. Like seven. <laughs> He's like legit seven foot, yeah. man. Like you know, I don't believe the six nine, six eleven. Like he's I was like just seven. gonna say, why do they, why do they not update know. that? I don't know, but he's seven foot, and he can shoot, dribble it. You know what I mean? It's just you just gotta make it tough for him. But like just his sheer like size, like you know what I mean? Like you know, being seven foot, stuff like that. Being able to like dri dribble and shoot like a guard is, you know, it's tough to guard, you know what I mean? And what's like the, like, I know when they give you like the, the play, like before the game, they give you like the breakdown, like how to guard somebody, whatever. KD, what does it even say? Yeah, make it tough for them. That's Crack it. crowd, yeah. try out your space. Most people guarding them are usually shorter than 
You know what I mean? If you put a bigger guy around his height, he's usually quicker. So you gotta just try to just try to follow the scouting report, whatever the team comes up with, try to follow yeah. it. And you know, just hope 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 it works. But there's no like like I'm sure certain players it's like, all right, this is their weakness. Like KD's weakness is is just make it hard. Yeah, you gotta just make it tough. Yeah. And just follow whatever scheme you in. It's like a five it's a five first in defense. But like one on one you gotta try to make it as tough as you as you can, you know. Yeah. What's been your favorite moment in your career? When I got drafted, I would say, and then basketball-wise, probably like three moments is either one of the, one of the two game winners or like or the fifty-point game. That was yeah. one of the games. Fifty-one. That was right after. I remember that because that was Kyrie had sixty against the Magic, yeah. and then you played him. At 51, yeah. yeah. It was like day after, I think, right? So, Something uh, like that, I yeah. Remember. Two games back to back, they got torched. Uh, and the game winner, I know the San Antonio one, what was the other one? Going state last year. Okay. Uh, How was the switch up for you going from Detroit to Atlanta? It was good, man. It was a good transition. It was a, it was a blessing uh, to be another good organization, you know? They had a great, they have a great front office. In Atlanta, and you know, obviously, great state, great teammates, stuff like that. And, you know, I was, I was grateful and appreciative of my time in Detroit, though, for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I learned a lot. I got a chance to play. You know, I had good guys around me. They had a good front office, um, good coaches, stuff like that. So, you know, I was able to learn a lot. And then going to Atlanta, I was able to, you know, go play with them, have a chance to play in the playoffs. I was just gonna ask you know that. what I mean. And, uh, now we got a new coaching staff now, Quinn. He's an amazing coach, so mm -hmm. I think it was a it was a good transition. It was a blessing. Is that how different is that atmosphere? Playoff basketball versus regular season basketball? It was it is different for sure. Like the game is still the game is the game, but you know, every every possession it just seems like it matters more, you know, stuff yeah. like that. So it's cool.